Hey guys, welcome back. So in these boxes, I have two new generators. Neither one has any moving parts. They don't require oil and they're virtually maintenance free. Not to mention they come with a five billion year fuel supply. Sounds too good to be true, but it is. So let's get them out of the box and take a closer look. A few months back, I did a fairly comprehensive video on this power station back here, but the one thing I couldn't demonstrate was its ability to charge via solar power. And as soon as that video aired, Bose RV reached out and offered to send me two of their 180 watt panels. These max out at about 18 volts, 10 amps, for a combined power of 360 watts. So. I wanna put these to the test, but before I can do that, I do need to make an adapter to connect these panels to that power station. And to that end, they also included 20 feet of 10 gauge wire, a 15 amp fuse, and a crimper tool. So let's get these cables made up. We'll get everything outside and put it to the test. So I'm just gonna start by getting all this stuff out of the packaging so we can just get a better look at what we have. These cords, they come in 10 foot increments all the way up to 100 feet. Uh, they do sell cords on their site that have the plugs on both ends. But when you get into the longer lengths, the assumption is you're doing a custom install. You wanna cut it to fit your system perfectly and then add these connectors on at the end. So that's what we need the crimping tool for. Everything else already has those connectors pre-installed, like on this fuse holder and the solar panels themselves. Now, there was one adapter I had to buy on Amazon and that's needed for my power station. It's an Anderson to solar adapter. This is also a 10 gauge cord, but it really stands out the difference here because if you look at the Bose RV cord on the right and the Amazon one on the left, the insulation is much, much thinner on this cord and it's not gonna last as long. And that's not a good thing. You want a cord like this that's gonna hold up because those solar panels, they will last for decades. You know, getting 20, 30 years out of them is not out of the question. You wanna have something that's gonna hold up. So let's get this stuff out of the way. We'll get these zip ties off and add these connectors. Gonna start with the black wire and just strip back about a half an inch of insulation. And this is the crimping tool. And these are used to kind of ratchet down on this weather seal once the connector is installed. This kit also comes with extra pins and connectors, uh, which we don't need in this case since the wire came with its own. This is the part where you need to stop and think about this for a minute because it's really easy to make a mistake here. You have two different connectors, the male connector and the female connector and you also have a male and a female pin. And logically, you would think the male pin goes with the male connector. But if you do that, you'll find out pretty quickly 
that you're wrong. It's actually male connector, female pin, female connector, male pin. And since we already have a male connector on here, we do not need to put the same on the other end. We need a female connector with a male pin down here. And the way you wanna get this installed is you wanna make sure all the strands go into this connector and you slide it right up to the end until these tabs are right up against the insulation and that's where you would put the tool on and crimp down on it. Now this tool, it has three different slots. They are different sizes. So I already checked to find which slot fits best and it seems like in this case it is the middle one. So when you use the connector, or sorry, the tool to crimp down on the pin, you need to orient it so that the round side of the connector is on this round part here. And then you crimp down to form that connection. So let's try to position the tool to do just that. That should be perfect. It's nice and tight. And this you just slide on until you hear it click. Theoretically. Like that. Now it's installed. And you just tighten this down until you hear it click. Like that. And then you're done. So we'll do the same to the other wire. There we go. Before I bring these outside, it's worth considering how I'm gonna connect these panels together because they do need to be connected together in order to get the full output into my power station. Uh, there's two options on how to do it. You can run these in parallel or series. And if you run them in parallel, you're just essentially combining the positive wire on each panel into a single output and the same on the negative. So by doing that, the voltage, it'll stay at 18 volts, but the amps will double to 20 amps. The other option is to connect it in series, positive on one panel connects to the negative on the other, and that will double the voltage, but keep the amps the same. And in my case, that is how I'm gonna connect these because my power station, it maxes out at 48 volts, 15 amps, and running these in parallel would exceed that amperage rating, but combining them in series, I'll have room to spare. It's a pretty nice day out. Not a lot of clouds. So I think this is gonna be a good test. Anyway, I am up on the roof on my 33 foot Winnebago. And as you can tell, there is a lot of real estate up here for solar panels. You know, I estimate I could fit about 11 of these panels up here and generate up to 2,000 watts. Uh, this panel, it's about 58 inches long, 26 inches wide, and an inch and three eighths deep. Now, in my case, I don't think I'm gonna do a permanent install on my RV. I don't do a lot of boondocking, but I do have a portable power station and think I wanna keep the panels portable as well. So I'm gonna get this off the roof and out into the yard and wire it up to that power station. A 
I've got both of these panels set up at a 23 degree angle. And for the time of year, for where I'm located, that should give me close to the max power output. These are rated at 22% efficient. And as long as they're clean, we should get close to that. So I'm gonna connect up the wiring and in about 20 minutes, the panels should be in the sun. So we'll get them connected to the power station and see how they do. So I'll connect the positive from one panel to the negative of the other. I'm gonna add the inline fuse. and connect the 20 foot cord. We're starting at a 26% state of charge. So this is gonna take at best I would say four or five hours to charge back up on solar. So the input will be displayed right here when I plug the solar in. And I'm also gonna add this inline meter. It's gonna show volts, amps, and watts as well. And I'm just curious what the breakdown is and how accurate is this meter versus this one right here. So I'm gonna plug this into the power station. We'll add the solar input and hopefully see the input to that power station ramp up. Nothing. Unfortunately, there's no power input and the meter is not illuminated either. So we have a wiring issue or potentially an issue with one of those panels. Let's start by eliminating the wire that I made. I'll leave the panels connected in series, see if we have any voltage. We should see uh, as high as 40 two volts. And actually we have 45. So that's good. We know the panels are good. They're connected in series. Let's check this fuse. We'll set this to measure resistance. And we have low resistance. So that means the power can pass through without issue. I'm just gonna reconnect this. Let's double check the DC out through the fuse. Forty five volts. Huh. Did I make these wrong? I don't think so. Um, let me just reconnect these and we'll move back inside, test the voltage at those connections. Interesting, 45 volts. So that doesn't leave a whole lot. It's either the meter I just bought or this Amazon connector. So let's set it back to test ohms. We'll check the red wire first. It should be a low reading. And it is. Check the black wire. C 
Seems good. I'm gonna plug this back in. We'll skip the meter. Let's check the volts. On the Anderson connector. Nothing. So the Amazon connector has let us down. That's too bad. Cause that means I'm gonna have to make my own. All right, let's try this again. There you can see the input is ramping up. It's approaching 200 watts. And the power station's estimating about seven or six hours to full state of charge. So things have stabilized at about 230 watts. Let's take a look at the inline tester. And the inline tester closely agrees. It shows 225 watts, close to seven amps, 33 volts. So I'm gonna let this run for a while, just check in periodically and see how it's doing. We just passed the one hour mark and we're already up to 40% state of charge. The input is at 242 watts. We're at the two and a half hour mark and charging, it's picked up a bit. We're at 264 watts, 55% state of charge. I'm at the six hour mark and we made it to 77%, but at this point I'd say we're pretty much done as the input wattage has dropped to 26 watts. So the panels, they are fully shaded. The sun has moved to the other side of the house and the clouds have moved in as well. So that didn't help things. But even with those clouds in the sky, I did at one point see close to 300 watts. So I have no doubt that these panels can reach their rated capacity of 360 watts. And I had no issues with these panels as well. The only issue I had was with that Amazon connector. And I was able to use the Bose RV crimping tool to fix it up. So I just want to take a minute and thank Bose RV for sending me these panels to review. If you want to find out more about them, I'll leave that down in the description. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.